In a world where screens keep getting bigger and brighter, and no matter how much we're worn, screen time always seems to be on the rise, e-ink displays continue to offer us a respite from the rapid refresh rate radiance we are so used to gazing at. But has the time finally come for your smartphone to have one? Well today, Big Me sent over their new Highbreak e-ink smartphone for me to review, and hopefully I'll be able to answer that very question. The main attraction here is the 300 ppi e-ink display. There are two versions of the Highbreak, a $249 variant with a black and white Carta display, and a $279 variant with a color Kaleido display. The black and white version I opted for here gives up color in exchange for an etched glass display covering that I really like. Being a Carta display also means that contrast is much better than its colorful counterpart. Android on e-ink actually works quite well. Big Me has tuned the launcher, quick actions panel, and settings apps to really look their best on e-ink and it really makes a difference. Their e-ink control center is here as well, and it lets you tweak the display's settings on a per-app basis. There's an extreme mode that speeds up the refresh rate to what looks like around 20 FPS. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but for an e-ink display, it's actually really impressive. Scrolling is reasonably fluid, and all the sunlight readability of e-ink makes this an amazing phone to use outdoors. It's easy on the eyes, and even for something like gaming, it's actually usable. Not amazing by any means, but definitely usable in a pinch. There's also some nice extra features baked in, like the customizable always on display. My personal favorite is this clock calendar view here. The quick action button, while a bit high up on the device, is also a very nice touch. It's customizable, and I've got mine set up to do a full screen refresh with a long press and open the e-ink control center with a double press. Not everything is sunshine and rainbows though. Many shortcomings that can be easily forgiven on a purpose-built e-reader are a bit more glaring on a smartphone. The first of these is the software. The Highbreak ships with Android 11 and the January 5th, 2021 security update. Or to phrase that another way, this brand new device ships with software that's almost five years old. Now, to be fair, Big Me has released several system updates since I've received the device, which is great to see, but they've all been to the included apps and interface, not the underlying version of Android. And next is the camera. While other smartphones in this price bracket, such as the Moto G, are including dual camera setups with a 50 megapixel main shooter, the Highbreak only has one camera, and it's 13 megapixels. It definitely works, but it's not in the same class. That said, for a phone with a monochrome screen, this camera will probably be used more often for things like scanning documents, and to its credit, the phone does come with a document scanning app built right in. The build quality is actually quite impressive. I had a hard time deciding precisely what material the band around the sides of the phone is made of, but I think it's a coated metal of some sort. It seems too tough to be plastic, but also too heavy to be aluminum. Either way, the build is absolutely rock solid, and there are no creaks or flexing anywhere to be found. And the USB-C port on the bottom is the only I.O. other than the combined SIM and micro SD card tray. Spec-wise, we've got the same MediaTek Helio P35 that was used in Big Me's B751C color e-ink notepad. And while I don't mind a chipset like this and an e-reader, a smartphone is a bit different. At $279 for the Color Kaleido version, it's competing directly with the Moto G which is equipped with a Snapdragon 4 Gen 1. And that's roughly two times faster in most benchmarks. And in a device with a screen that's already slow to refresh, you don't wanna be waiting on your chipset to catch up on top of that. Quite a few third-party apps are a bit sluggish to use, as you can see here, despite having six gigabytes of RAM on board. And I think a better SoC would have gone a long way towards helping that. Something that really surprised me though was actually something the Highbreak doesn't have a dedicated speaker and vibration motor. All of the sound for music, phone calls, notifications, everything comes out of the earpiece. It gets plenty loud enough, but it's an odd choice nonetheless. The lack of a vibration motor is a strange one though. I don't think I've ever actually seen a smartphone or come to think of it, any cell phone that didn't have some sort of haptic feedback. And that might just be the biggest clue about the high brakes intended use case. Rather than a true e-ink smartphone, to me it seems like more of a middle ground between a true e-reader like the Kindle and a true smartphone like the iPhone. And when you look at it through that lens, this is actually a really compelling device. The 3300 milliamp hour battery lasts for about five days of intermittent use per charge in my experience, 
and the form factor makes this far more pocketable than any Kindle Amazon has ever released. The e-ink screen is amazing for reading books as usual, and if you're someone who only uses a phone for the basics like call and text, the extra features that Android brings might make this an even more compelling option. I do wish it had a headphone jack, but even despite having to use an adapter, I've personally been really enjoying using it as a music player. Its built-in 128 gigs of storage is more than enough for my music library, and having access to streaming services on top of that is just icing on the cake. And having an e-ink panel on something this versatile really is cool. I'm still finding new things to use it for each day. It actually makes a really amazing GPS experience given the long battery life and sunlight readable screen, especially on my motorcycle. E-Ink really is a fascinating technology and the high brake bundles it into an uncommon but very useful form factor at an attractive price. As long as you can look past the caveats needed to reach that price, I think you'll really enjoy it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.